listening to The Lives of the Puritans. Stories and biographical accounts written by Joel Beakey, Randall Peterson, and Benjamin Brooke. If you're interested about how the Puritans conducted themselves in fighting for religious liberty in the face of tyranny and persecution, then please join me and faithful men across the world as we read and discuss the lives of the Puritans. Gilbert Alcock was an excellent minister of Puritan principles, but silenced with many of his brethren for nonconformity. April 3, 1571, he presented a supplication to the convocation in behalf of himself and his suffering brethren, earnestly soliciting the house to consider their case and redress their grievances. In this supplication, now before me, he spoke with considerable freedom and boldness concerning the corruptions of the church. He expressed himself as follows. The ceremonies now retained in the church and urged upon the consciences of Christians, occasion the blind to stumble and fall, the obstinate to become more hard-hearted. Christ's messengers are persecuted. The holy sacrament is profaned, God dishonored. The truth despised, Christian duty broken, the hearts of many are surely vexed. They cause papists and wicked men to rejoice in superstition, error, idolatry, and wickedness. They set friends at variance and provoke the curse of God. Woe unto him by whom the offense cometh. The godfathers and godmothers who promise to do so much for the child are the Pope's kindred. And by his canon law, like priests, are forbidden to marry. It is holden that kneeling in the public sacrament is more reverent, more religious, and more honorable to God. And thus they make themselves wiser than Jesus Christ, who sat with his disciples at the Last Supper. Matthew 26, In vain do ye worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. If a minister preach true doctrine and live virtuously, yet omit the last ceremony for conscience sake, he is immediately indicted, deprived, cast into prison, and his goods wasted and destroyed. He is kept from his wife and children, and at last excommunicated, even though the articles brought against him be so ever false. How heavy these ceremonies lie upon the consciences of Christians, and what difference there is between them, and those for which the people of God have been, and are still, so much persecuted. Judge ye as ye expect to be judged in the day of judgment. Those who observe your ceremonies, though they be idolaters, common swearers, adulterers, or much worse, live without punishment, and have many friends. We therefore beseech your fatherhoods to pity our case, to take these stumbling blocks from us, that we may live quiet and peaceable lives to the honor of our God. The convocation were, however, of another mind, and instead of lessening their burdens, very much increased them.